In this episode, we're taking a look at what happens when you have the chance alignment of two galaxies. While this has nothing to do with horoscopes, I predict you're going to love what you see. This is a picture in a thousand words. Welcome to this episode of A Picture in a Thousand Words. We're going to be taking a look at the horseshoe Einstein ring. There's a lot to get the details of this story, so why don't we dive right in? So this image that we're going to be taking a look at was taken with the Hubble Space Telescope. The entire size of this image is approximately 1 30th of a degree on a side. And that's about if you took a credit card and held it up at arm's length, you know, the thin, like the thin part of the credit card, that's about the thickness that you would see of this image. So it seems fairly small, but it's actually a fairly wide area on the sky, if you think about it. And this is all just a small part of the constellation Leo. So the colors that you're seeing here are very similar, mostly similar, to the colors that your eyes yourself can see. So the blues that you're seeing there are very similar to the blues that your eyes can see in visible light. The greens, same thing, greens that your eyes can see in visible light. But the red is actually infrared. That's a little redder than what your eyes would normally be able to see. And so we're bringing out some of this invisible light that we could actually pick out. And the Hubble Space Telescope is so great at taking a look at. So in this image, there are a ton of objects, both near and far. You've got a couple of stars here, the ones with what look like crosshairs on top of them. And these are likely stars that are in our own galaxy. But we're also seeing a lovely bunch of galaxies that are much further away. You have small ones, you have large ones, you have ones as big as your head. They're all in this image and they're all across the universe. And so we're seeing galaxies that are really close and really, really far. But we're gonna take a look at one specific galaxy. So let's zoom in. And it's this red one right over here. And it looks kind of orangey red to us. And this galaxy is a biggie. It's about 10 times the mass of our home galaxy, the Milky Way, and it contains about 4 trillion stars. So that is 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. If you count that up, that is 12 zeros worth of stars. That's a lot of stars. But the vast majority of the matter in that galaxy is not actually stars. It's something called dark matter. And all you need to really know about dark matter to understand this image is that we can't see it. We just know it's there and it has gravity. So it's pulling things in. And so the vast majority of all of this stuff is dark matter. This galaxy is about 5 billion light years away. And so that sounds fairly far, and it is pretty far, but on its own, this is actually a pretty boring galaxy. It's got a lot of stars, you know, as we said, but it doesn't have a lot of gas and it's not forming new stars. And all the stars are doing is they're just whizzing around, you know, we just kind of going all over the place and making this look like a big party that's just kind of, all the stars are doing their own thing, not really interacting with each other very much. But the prize of this image is not in the galaxy itself, but it's in the ring around it. So what we're seeing here is this blue looking ring that seems to go most of the way around the galaxy. And what's happening there is a really cool phenomena that was predicted a while back, you know, nearly a hundred years ago at this point, and we're seeing today. So let's say that this was us here watching on Earth. And the red galaxy over here was right over here, you know, nice big sort of random mash, mishmash of various stars. But you had another galaxy that was almost perfectly behind it, like right over here, right? So it is almost perfectly aligned all the way to that galaxy. And these three places, Earth, this red galaxy and this other galaxy that's much further away are all very closely aligned. Well, what happens is the light 
from this much more distant galaxy likes to travel in a straight line, but then the gravity of this bigger, larger red galaxy pulls it in and it bends it over towards Earth. Same thing on the other side where the gravity on, you know, light tries to travel this way. The gravity from this galaxy again pulls it in and bends it towards the Earth. And so we're getting light that should have gone off in a different direction now being focused or magnified onto Earth. And this makes this foreground red galaxy act like a lens. And so essentially what we're doing is we're use, able to use this foreground galaxy as a telescope. So we're using a telescope on top of a telescope to be able to see something that's much further away. So remember, this galaxy over here, we said it was five billion light years away. Super far away. But this galaxy that we're seeing as a ring, and it's important to know that it's actually not a ring in real life. If you can see the galaxy up close and personal, it's not really ring-shaped. It's just ring-shaped because of what the gravity and the lens is doing. This galaxy is now 19 billion light years away. So nearly four times as far as the foreground galaxy, or what we call the lens galaxy, because this entire phenomena is called gravitational lensing. And we can learn a lot about this galaxy just by looking at the light. We can see little, you know, parts of the galaxy and using our information about this lens galaxy, the red galaxy, we can start piecing together what that other galaxy looks like and what is in that other galaxy. And because light takes time to travel, that's why we're coding everything in light years, it's because that is the distance that light travels in one year. This galaxy is, the light that's coming from it, came from a very long time ago. In fact, it came from about 11 billion years ago. That is the light that we're seeing over here. That is fairly close to when the universe began. So by looking at this galaxy, we are starting to look at what the what happened to galaxies very close to the start of the universe. So the shape of the image of the background galaxy, well, that's called an Einstein ring in this case. And that very much depends on where how close of a perfect alignment the galaxies are. Because if you remember, if we are here, this you know larger, big foreground galaxies over here and this galaxy is over here, you can imagine if it's perfectly aligned, then the light rays from the top bend down, the light rays from the bottom bend down. But if you're only here, these light rays would bend and go off somewhere else, but these light rays might bend and come to you. And so depending on what the alignment of it is, you'll get a different shape. But the shape that we're getting here is almost a perfect, almost a perfect ring. And that's because these galaxies are so close to being perfectly aligned with where we're looking from. And that is why we call this an Einstein ring. It's named because Einstein was one of the first people to predict that gravity could bend light in this way. All of this only happened by chance. It's basically chance that this galaxy happens to be sitting on top of that galaxy that's much, much further away. And it's only by chance that they lined up so perfectly. And it's only from this image, because of this lucky coincidence, we can start to figure out what galaxies from much earlier in the universe started. And so we can start to try to figure out how it all began. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of A Picture in a Thousand Words. If you like that, we've got an entire playlist of previous episodes that you might want to check out as well. If you do like this, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. It helps us a lot. And if you have any suggestions for pictures that you want us to take a look at in the future, throw them in the suggestion box below or the comment box below. Your fun fact for today is that empty space is actually really hard to find. In any direction you look at, you'll be looking at hundreds to thousands of galaxies in just the area covered by the moon, as long as you have a telescope that can see faint enough. Until next time.